So, uh, actually, I should thank Professor Anubhacharya and uh, this whole talk as well as uh, something which I'm going to show you uh, at the end of my talk, all because of the inspiration from him. Now, since the last session beginning, what you are hearing is the rare genetic disorder. And uh, one of the important aspects of the rare genetic disorder is not that we do large genomics program, we do sequencing, and we identify, we say, this many percentage of patients, and so on and so on. The most important thing is what can we do for those patients? And in that context, gene therapy, as you just got a fantastic uh, view from uh, Dr. Sena, is that gene therapy is a far away and it is difficult to reach. What we need rather to give 5 to 15 percent amelioration of the difficulties of the patients. And that is possible only through the gene reprogramming. And this gene reprogramming is only possible when we talk not the genetics, but we talk the epigenetics. So I thought it is an opportunity for me also to just give sort of a layman view on epigenetics to all of us because inside the most important bodies with diverse multidisciplinary knowledge and intelligence. So if we say the uh, epigenetics, I will just spend five to seven minutes on that. We all start our life from a single cell. And this single cell gives the diverse types of this Here, cell. Hold on, please. Can somebody put up their phones, please? Yes. So, <coughs> I get two minutes. So, now, from <coughs> single cell, we start our life, and that gives diverse types of cells. Blood cells, kidney cells, nerve cells, liver cells. And interestingly, all these cells and organs are absolutely different from each other. But if you do the gene sequence of each, each one is identical. Then the question is, what is the magic? Why the same gene is giving different kinds of cells? So there is something above than genetics. <coughs> and that is called epigenetics. Now, if I give you a little more details of it. So, your DNA is not your destiny. The gene sequence which you have come up with genetics, that's not the really functional one. The gene which is likely marked for responding to the signal. Signal of what? Signal of infection, signal of your metabolism, signal of your age, and signal of your psychological makeup. So everything together, so if you take, take an example, you look at these mice, two mice looks very different. Their gene sequence is identical, but their genes are differentially modified. This modification is the fundamental of epigenetics, even if the gene sequence is same. So, if we go a little deeper, your DNA is wrapped into the protein and RNA and forms your chromosome territories. Each chromosome territory is in your cells are present in different places. Then in a completely different environment. <coughs> Thereby, even if you have an identical gene from father and mother, one expresses the other doesn't. And you will find out there are rare genetic disorder, which is a problem with this paternal or maternal inheritance. So the song of the life will only be sang when it is rightly modified. Otherwise, your genes which are present with the DNA, protein and RNA together like balls in your cells and combine everything together in your chromosomes are not really functional. And that is why the fundamental modification like methylation of your DNA, DNA associated protein like a stone modification and small small RNA which gives the three dimensional identity of your genome 
in different stages. And this three-dimensional identity often alters. Often alters by the signal of life. And this could be infection. This could be metabolism. This could be your age. Anything. Okay? And that is why, when you go back to the Mendel, the father of genetics, he understood the nature, that is the gene, but he could not talk about the nature, that is the environment, and that is the gene modification. Just take an example. If this mom having a female baby child inside her, and she smokes continuously, this baby's ovary cells will be modified in such a way that that will continue at least four generations. So epigenetics need not be transferred to be transgender it also. It could be as powerful as that. And if you see that, who is the most important person in your life? This is the most important person in your life, that is your mother. She is the one who has set your first epigenetic cassette. When you, you were inside her, how was she treated in the society? what she ate, how she behaved, everything has affected you today. And it is not fantasy, it is the proven science today. And that is why, this is one of my most favorite pictures by Jamin Leroy. You can see so many paintings in the world, but mother and son, such a wonderful expression, you will never get how the son is absolutely dependent and safe in mother. So this is an example, if you see, if this box, of mine gets a very good care of the mother, then these pups will not be aggressive. They will be able to face the lot of stress in the life. Why you know? Because when they get mother's care, the genes in the hippocampus are required for this facing the stress and not methylated. Nothing, you just change them. You know, if you swap the mother, then you will see the totally different scenario. So this shows how important is your early childhood, how important is your early behavior. And, but is everything written on the story? It cannot be changed. The beauty of epigenetics is that it is reprogrammable. You can reprogram. Normally I show in the school when I give the talk of a very you know, mo nice movie. And this is what? This is you. Who is you? So you are the combination of the genome comes from your father, and genome comes from your mother. And together this is your genome form. And of course it has been modified inside your mom because of her nutrition, her stress, her lifestyle. And then slowly in your own lifestyle, you form your epigenome. You have a good friend, and this friend tells you that, look, you must be relaxed with the smoking. And that you change your epigenome. You modify your epigenome, right? And this has a tremendous effect on you. But sometimes in life you do get good friends also. And those friends say, no, come on, let's go for a jogging. And it's a proven truth that if you do everyday exercise, even in your brain, the BDNF expression increases, your memory increases, your epigenome changes, and you are victorious. But the good thing cannot be continued for a long time. So what happened? There are other friends that say, come on, enough is enough, let's enjoy the food, fast food. So you start having the less sleep, more burger, and again your epigenome is changing. And eventually what you can see the pouch has come. <laughs> so this is a symbol. So your genetic character cannot be changed, but this epigenetic character can be changed. And you see, this is the fundamental aspects of these that your exercise, your nutritional fat, because genetically I am a Bengali, so I put a fish here, epigenetically in the Karnataka. So, and then you see your environment and your emotional health. Everything affects your epigenome. And am I talking something very, you know, very gross or something unscientific? No. The reason is, I will come to the next slide that this is just one, one, one slide I would like to go through you. So now a new terminology has come, what's called social epigenomics. How you are treated in a society, how are treated in your community, that's going to affect your epigenomic health. And that is why, you see, these people are doing street drama. An early childhood, especially women, if they are not treated well, 
you are actually destroying the epigenome of your society. <coughs> and we have to be very careful about it. A tremendous non-specific methylation happens. That continues. And that <coughs> cause of several aggravation, several rare genetic mutations to express as a disease. And this is why what we call stress and trauma are directly connected to the epigenetic modifications. And if I say that these are not fantastic because the food what you take and finally get digested and the factors which come out, these are the ingredient of your different modifications. Your acetylation, methylation, <coughs> phosphorylation and so on. So. And these are controlled by a large number of the secondary metabolites and the factors. And this is, see I, if I take an example, which we call the acetylation of the lysine residue. And you find out that there are two classes of enzyme, deacetylase and acetyl transferase. It's reverse deacetylase, deacetylase based on the signal. The signal what I repeat at time and again. And this directly controls the homeostasis of your genes. This is called acetylation homeostasis. This acetylation homeostasis, when it is hypoacetylated, genes are closed. It is not expressive. When it is hyperacetylated, genes are open. And if this balance is lost, that can cause the disease like neurodegeneration to the cancer. And there are a large number of cancers are called rare, rare diseases because of the frequency. And this acetylation homeostasis controls not only the, you know, it is not direct, it is also directly connected to your aging. If you look at this beautiful girl, after giving everything to the society, when she will become a mom like this, then you will see a large change in epigenetics in her genes. There is a huge change in acetylone. There is a huge change in the position of the acetylations. And for your information, if you make the balance properly, this can be delayed. This can be delayed, this can be reprogrammed. And that is why when the aging processes happen, your chromosome breaks in three joints, there is a huge epigenetic alteration happens. And for your information, the largest epigenetic alteration happens in the brain. And that is why we do a lot of exercise, but we do not do the brain exercise. There is a huge number of brain exercises possible. Write right? every day one page in your mother tongue before you go to bed. Do not use the calculator. Use the corner of your every corner of your brain. Do not use the mobile phone as far as possible. <coughs> so, I'm giving them some of the gross thing I'm trying to tell you. So, the rare genetic disorders, which you have heard from the morning, depends upon the population. Very simply, in Indian population, 500,000. Below or within 500,000, any incident will be considered as a rare, rare diseases in our society. And the thing is, the statistics say 300 million people in India are actually suffering because of this. The biggest problem is we do not know the diagnosis of it. And this could be, as since morning we are talking, it could be large number of cancer. We know cervical cancer. But the question is, there is a type of cervical cancer which is called the adenocervical cancer. Now, this is a very devastating one, and this is the number is very less. Inflammatory breast cancer. <coughs> Even probably some type of pancreatic cancer will come. GNE myopathy, <coughs> syndrome, the lysosomal storage disorders, and of course the muscular dystrophy. So, I'm just going to give you a quick few examples. I'm not going to take the whole time of yours. That and these examples I'm trying to give you saying that this is directly <coughs> connected to the genetic modifications, and there are lots of hope that we can reprogram it. Reprogram it through the diet, through the nutraceuticals, through the phytopharmaceuticals, and of course through the small molecule therapy. We need not go for the times taking. The uh, you know the genetic uh, genetic manipulations gene therapy. So if you take the you know, the epigenetic changes in the rare disorder, genetic disorders, you will find out that the genetic influences. Of course, there is a mutation, alteration, etc. These genetic mutation when will be manifested? 
this manifestation will have definite connections with either the DNA methylation, histone modifications, and those RNA. I said that they are involved in the operation of the genome dynamics is very very important, and they are finally will be giving the modified gene expression, and that's the final goal. That's the downstream. So this you cannot change. This there is a huge scope of change. And that is the hope I would like to play. If you look at GAD myopathy. Now GAD myopathy is basically a cyanic acid basic pathways. And the GNE, the genes which are downstream, I'm not going to take, tell you that. So basically the slow degradation of the muscles. And if you see that it is not only the hypersilation, this also has a connection to the, the uretical excretions. And this final, you know, there is a huge number of change in the phosphorylations. And these genes expressions are connected to the DNA methylations. And there is a huge scope there again, <coughs> altering, altering. If you look at the lysosomal disorder, this is a group of disorder. And lysosome is a very important function of your DNA <coughs> through autophagy or non autophagy path. And if that is depicted, a group of 50 autosomal recessive inherited metabolic diseases are connected to that. So this could be a variety of its uh, connection can be possible. And if you see the LSDs, in these LSDs, one of the important thing is the function of that deacetylase, what I told you already. So this deacetylase, as I said, that is the important enzyme for the reverse reaction of acetylo acetylo acetylation homeostasis maintenance. And of course, there is a correlation between large number of CPG RNA, that is the real methylation sites, CPG altered methylation sites. And there is a very interesting, I showed those balls, which genes are you know actually reacted on. There are four different histones. One of the histones, protein called histone H4, that has a very specific acetylations that gets altered. So what I'm trying to portray to you is that the phenomenon is not that random. There is a whole point. If we look at the, the muscular dystrophy DM, DMD, which is largely present in Indian population, so far uh, we know, and there is onset of three to six years, the weakness of the muscle, muscle happens. And there, this is an extreme disorder, so most likely. There again, there is a change in the histone acetylation and deacetylation patterns. And there is a, you know, the, the, the dystrophic gene itself is regulated because of the altered acetylation patterns. So either you can talk about the HDAP inhibitors, which can be, and a couple of HDAP inhibitors are already in the market, already approved by the for the cancer therapy. So here comes the question of repurposing of the drug. And there is a new hope also there. You do not go for HDAP inhibition if you do not want. You rather you can directly go for activation of acetyl transferase. And that is also a very much possible. So this is one of the molecules which we came up with. This is the only known direct enzyme specific activator of one of the very important epigenetic enzyme, p 300 CBD. We have shown here for a different purposes here, but this enzyme also has another <coughs> important purpose that it can directly activate the acetyl transfer Instead of inhibiting the HDR, the hyperastylation situation you can create by activating that. Now, you see, this is the, the, another important uh, you know, then, uh, <coughs> I have five minutes I have. Okay. So the important thing is that FSHD. So this type of muscular dystrophy is a progressive myopathy that affects the individuals of all ages. It is an autosomal dominant genetic <coughs> condition that mostly inherited, caused by disrupted genetic and epigenetic regulation of microsatellite genes. Now, so this is gene, one of the important genes to X4. And this gene's expression is connected to based on the patients, DNA methylation, chromatin architectural questions. So there are proteins which is not being part of the main architecture of the genome. 
but these there are large number of architectural projects. Then, of course, the historical modifications and the asset, uh, acetylations, uh, a modification like acetylation, and a few non-coding RNAs like micro RNAs. So, the the treatment, no treatment is currently available for this. But there are large number of trials are happening. People have created the model system and people have also created the, you know, the couple of modifiers together, alicentifier and all, they have come up with the molecules which they are doing a screening to reverse these at the cell line level from the patients. So this is, this is being under progress. The another one is the <coughs> pattern syndrome. So people thought this pattern syndrome is a dangerous one. In the chromosome 15 is a large number of genes alteration, the heterogeneity is huge and there is no hope on it. That's what people thought. I'm not going through the disease uh, behavior of change and all detection, etc. And if you see, see that, so this is the inactivation of one of the very specific marks, H3K9 trimethylation. Again, among those who are destroyed, one of the other destroyed H3. That has a very specific lysine decision. That gets modified by the set of enzyme. A triple modification happens. And there are number of enzymes involved in that. So the genetic basis we know, epigenetic basis we are understanding because epigenetic basis has much more heterogeneity than the genetic one. And thereby, there is a scope of better even the special severity specific treatment. So this is just to show you that if you look at this paranoid syndrome, and if you see there is an alteration in a very specific methylation and this could be the highly heterogeneous from patient to patients and this has an associated alteration of the DNA methylation and the histolastomation. So people have already generated a mice model system where a screening strategy for the large number of small molecules are being already done. And this has been shown that one of the important thing is that one of the important enzyme being targeted is called G9A. G9A and GLP. This is very specific methyl transferase. What called is H3. And the four molecules are about to enter in the phase one trial for G9A and related diseases. Now, why not? This will also be very useful for the rare genetic disorders. And just, just to tell you that, this is the epicta alba. This has a lot of viral electron group of compounds. And recently derived from that, we have come up with a, this is yet to see the light of the day or whatever. And this, we have a very specific inhibition of the ASTK9 diabetes. And it's a natural compound. Very small modification has been done for the epicta So, I would not go to the details of the cancer and epigenetic modification based on the cancer, its locations, there, is, there could be different types of modifications. And the beauty is what we are finding now that some of the rare cancer is harboring a very interesting epigenetic language which we do not know. There is a huge scope of fundamental research and the associated research on the designing of the molecule. Okay, so if you see the rare cancer, for example, if you look at the if you look at the you know, the rare cancer sites, for example, if you see in the blood there are twenty two percent, female reproductive eighteen percent, protein percent diabetes. So these are the percentages of the cancer. What by definition of the frequency you can consider the rare of rare diseases, and each of them apparently the initial results suggest that there could be a very unique epigenetic language present here. And thereby, uh, I'm, 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 I'm two more statements. So, that is why the balance between another important thing sites called ACK27 trimethylases, a very specific sites, and the enzyme complex is EZH2. There are compounds in the phase 2 trial which targeting the EZH2 complexes. So, this is being designed for the cancer therapy. 
And also, as I said, the P3 under CVT compound, we directly connect or largely the acetylation. Then just I want to show you one of the examples of this molecule, which is a very broad spectrum acetyl transferase inhibitor. And what we had shown that indeed it is very effective to reduce the acetylation back in a level in the tumor samples. So there is a, there is a big hope that we can work on. The other one is the ALL, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, which generally happens in the elderly population also. And this is another one is the BRCA1 and BRCA2, which is good to know that this is very important mutation related to the reproductive uh, cancers. But again, the expression level can be altered, the mutant protein, by altering the methylation level. <coughs> then I've just already talked about the cervical cancer. These are few examples which I have given specific examples of the specific genes where targeting by the you know, file as a cytidine or targeting the very specific miRNA or targeting PZH2 methyl transferases or reprogramming the DNA methylation or reprogramming of the histone modification. Indeed, we can generate the large number of therapeutic targets and hopefully a therapeutic measures. So, this is the last slide. So, based on these, we are highly encouraged and uh, credit goes to, uh, largely goes to the inspiration to uh, Professor Alok Bhattacharya. So, in CDRI, we are coming up, hopefully, if the DG permits, CDRI Center for Orphan Diseases. And we have got a promise from Dr. Yusuf Hamid uh, from CIPLA that he will be sponsoring this. And this center plan to do called, this is the CDRI CIPLA Center for Orphan Diseases. Phase one, we are trying to take the neuromuscular disorders and a rare genetic disorders, two up to two different lines, three different diseases. And the second phase will be the other uh, disorders based on this. Uh, availability and facilities, money, etc. So this could be, uh, this is, we are looking with a lot of hope and to, to CSIR as well as to the, uh, to the CIPLA company. The last one, this is a quote from our beloved president, past president, Professor uh, Dr. Abdul Kalam, that there are a lot more to be done in this area and continue to put a lot of attentions. Thank you very much for your kind attention.